Dead Bod, Dead Bod Rap Pod, Dead Bod Rap Pod, episode 17, 17, yeah, we're kind of doing this shit, I'm kind of like, damn, it's happening, we've had some some real dope guests, um, some interesting discussions, and, and today is, is no different, um, we're going to talk about, is hip hop bad for your health? We are the dad bods, and we do not body shame here. We come in various sizes. <laughs> There's all types of dad bods. Um, so we're going to talk about that a little bit, um, the impact of hip-hop culture on people's health and, and kind of some of the recent passings that have, that have happened. Um, I am joined by my fellow dad bodery, um, Nate LeBlanc. How's it going? Good. I could be more healthy. <laughs> could you? I could. could you? I could be more healthy, but you know, it's a phase. Kind of let uh, political events influence my nihilism and sure. just like eat whatever the fuck I wanted last year. Emotional eating. Emotion. Just eating yeah. the feelings. There yeah. were so many feelings. <laughs> and so many feelings. Yes. Uh, but, yeah. But okay. Okay. We can work on it. There we go. Um, probably the most fit of the dad bods, and you might know him from Men's Health Magazine. Um, <laughs> And some other, actually, wax poetics and real hip hop <laughs> shit. Uh, Mr. David Ma, how's it going? Hey guys, good to be here. Um, my mom made the breakfast with no hog this morning, so we're good. <laughs> we're good. Uh, keeping in theme. Keeping in theme. There it is. Um, <laughs> my name's Demone Carter, aka Dem One. My blood pressure is legit. You know what I mean? Um, I'm in this thing. Um, so, so you know what? What kind of prompted uh, this topic to come? up to the forefront is hip hop is getting to a certain age where we've got rappers that we love, know and love hip hop personalities um, that are in their forties who passed away. So, you know, we've got the recent passing of Fife Dog, Prodigy, um, Combat Jack. Um, There's a couple, I I think DJ Easy Rock passed um, not too long ago. Um, And it's really like early in mm-hmm. in modern america i think the the life expectancy is like 68 or something for a man but we're starting to see these kind of like you know cats ain't getting shot it's just mm-hmm. they're it's it's these kind of lifestyles so so my question for the group is is there something kind of inherent in the in the lifestyle that goes with hip hop and and rap that hmm. is that is kind of making the artist and maybe even the the fan bases lead unhealthy lifestyles fitness guru nate leblanc I, I would say no not necessarily but there's something about the grind of being an artist and especially a touring musician sure. that's bad for your health like it's sure. the the shitty food at mm-hmm. the truck stops and the fast food joints and the never sleeping because mm. it's the cousin of death right and you know just kind of <laughs> the, the ways that um and the drugs nate the yeah drugs. Well, the, right. we're gonna get to that part right there's certainly kind of a, a new generation of rappers and we I think Dave made this point on a much earlier episode that the our heroes were the drug dealers and now the younger <laughs> generations mm-hmm. rap you know like people they're into are the drug takers right sure. right so there it's it's all about kind of pills and mm-hmm. that that's certainly bad for your that's health That's certainly bad. But I don't think hip hop itself is bad mm-hmm. for one's health. Right. There's there's plenty of examples of uplifting kind of uh messages and sure. about taking care of yourself it just depends how you take right, it right right and i mean and the narrative is always like oh hip hop is bad cuz it's blunt and it's blah 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 first right. off weed not that bad right right um second i mean you know we look at a uh, we look at keith richards who's like the poster boy for <laughs> like the oldest like most grossest fucking you know <laughs> uh rotten inside body person ever right <laughs> but no one says oh rock and roll is bad for your health you know sure. what I mean? and right, the whole sure. ethos is sex drugs and rock and roll right so right. i don't know i i i don't think ultimately it's it's bad for you. Yeah, I mean, I it, there's there's a couple of, of layers here on a on Fonte's new record, which is amazing, very not, good record. Yeah, I'm not sure when you'll hear this, but when you do, go fucking listen to uh, Fonte's record. No news, good news. He does a song which I can honestly say has not been done before called "Cry No More," where he's talking about how his dad died um, at 54 because of kind of unhealthy living in habits and how his mom still smokes and he's kind of like i don't want to take care of you when you get older and also going as deep as to talk about 
um, his wife sleeping on the couch because he has fucking sleep apnea and shit like that. That's like, some real girl man shit, dude. Man, I was just like, whoa, this is wow. a really, you know, in, in Fonte style, like he made that work, of course. But yeah. um, it's this kind of like um, this weird coming of age shit. I'm sorry, kids, mm-hmm. you get to a certain age. And then, like, you just start having fucking problems. And I, and part of me wonders, you know, I, um, I actually had somebody who kind of came up in the scene with us who had a stroke Whoa. at my age. Mm. You know what I mean? And so um, weed is not bad in and of itself. And I think uh, society's catching up to that. Wrapping it in tobacco in a, in a cigar. You're not supposed to inhale cigars. That you're not supposed to inhale. Um, you know, kind of this idea that... Um, Real shit is drinking malt liquor, although that's kind of tailed off. Malt liquor was definitely my generation. Yeah, and, um, I had my fill of it. <laughs> but but there's there is this kind of dichotomy where um, I think on some level, this kind of hood food desert eating is almost kind of celebrated in a way. I remember when Fifty Cent was on TV cooking a fucking piece of salmon, and people got all on his helmet like. Oh, that's that's kind of weak shit. That's like, bougie. Are, yeah, that's bougie or whatever. And I'm like, I don't know, man. Grilled salmon's kind of fucking good. It's I'm great. Not, yeah. yeah. So I'm I'm not sure. But at the same time, with that being said, I didn't eat pork for ten years, um, kind of '90s to early 2000s, because of hip hop. Interesting. Because of listening to Brand Nubian and all these folks kind of expound on how bad it was. Now, I'm, I'm smoking blunts and drinking fucking malt liquor the whole time. Right. But So were uh, they. Yeah, exactly. But uh, it was this thing where I was, I think it was actually Ice Cube who put it over the top for me. I'm like, oh, shit. The hardest dude alive doesn't um, doesn't eat pork? Well, shit, then, then I don't eat pork. You know Are what you mean? saying he didn't eat no ham and eggs because it's high in and cholesterol? cholesterol. <laughs> oh, <shit>. <laughs> <laughs> Nate's favorite song off of People's <laughs> Extinctive Travels. Um what what are, what are the other health health conscious anthems of, of uh, hip hop lore? Beautiful food by Edon. Oh um, my goodness! Which not necessarily healthy, but just definitely a variety, right? If you listen to the foods, they're pretty healthy. Are they? Okay, <laughs> okay. Totally. I love I love that song. I love that yeah. song. Okay. Um, I'm trying to. Um, Common has that song. It's like the watermelon. They keep saying watermelon in the song. It's um. Like pineapple water. It's on Resurrection. Yeah, yeah. Pineapple that, that touches on the. Uh, okay. Health benefits of eating eating well. Um, okay. I have trouble coming up with other ones. Yeah, not, which not makes too many. For great radio. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, it's it's interesting because I feel like um, um, there's some kind of there's a little bit of stigma I think um, around maybe healthy lifestyles, but on the other end, fucking Dr. Dre looks like. Um, the dude from Fantastic Four totally. now. So maybe yeah. Pharrell, I mean, Pharrell yeah. actually Does ages in age. reverse. Yeah, it's totally. crazy. <laughs> <laughs> Benjamin Button. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm not, I don't mm. think he eats. I think it's actually a vampire. But, um, yeah, oh, so, so kids, listen. Let me tell you like this. From the dad bods, um, the pill's probably not good. I'm not, I, don't, I don't have high hopes for how this next generation of rappers will age. I mean, I, we as we're taping this, I think, Rick Ross had an episode not too long ago where he um they found him unconscious. You oh, know, right, we, right. We, got, we were just talking about it. Yeah, we had we had Pimp C who died at an early age and, and a lot of people feel like Lean that's... is clearly bad for you. Lean is clearly bad, but Lean, clearly sep- <laughs> celebrated. Lean rots your teeth, first of all. Right. And the se- right. second of all, yeah, it's like the falling asleep while on lean is almost like <laughs> kind of, kind of, de- and for that to be the How drug are you of gonna choice, not going to, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. I guess yeah. I, d- I don't follow lean culture especially closely, but I guess they're they're out of the main kind. Um, the a brand pro, name, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, like Soldier Boy bought all the rest of it. Nice. Um, mm-hmm. Yeah. So I don't yeah. know, man. That yeah. that shit's not good for you. <laughs> it, just drinking that much Sprite and eating that many Jolly Ranchers totally. wouldn't be good for you. Then yeah. you put in the codeine cough syrup. It's just like. Literally, <laughs> yeah, terrible. What it what it most deaf say? Um, Hip hop went from selling crack to smoking it, mm-hmm. right? And, and there's this there's a there's definitely a celebration of a drug culture. I, I think I think that wave is gonna crest though, but you'll still have the face tattoos. So I don't know. <laughs> that's gonna be a right. tough one. That's you be can undread one. your rainbow hair, but you right. can never but, take your face tattoo. But the off. face totally. tattoos are forever. Um, Okay. Well, uh, while we're on subject, I want to touch on probably my favorite um, sort of health, hip hop health anthem, which is Dead Prez's uh, "Be Healthy." Oh yes. yeah, yes. 
I don't eat no meat, no dairy, no sweets, only ripe vegetables, fresh fruit and whole wheat. I'm from the old school, my household smell like soul food, bruh, curry falafel, barbecue tofu, no fish though, no candy bars, no cigarettes, only ganja, fresh squeezed juice from oranges, exercising daily to stay healthy, and I rarely drink water out the tap cause it's filthy. And it, you know, it kind of reminds me of like Chance, how you can be like, you know, Chance is like squeaky clean Christian rapper, but can still mm-hmm. deliver and be entertaining. These guys, like uh, um, Dead Prez is, I mean, these tracks still sound dark and scary, yeah. but they're talking about lentils and porridge and fruit. <laughs> it's amazing. Uh, you guys should check it out. That's should all. Should be more that's lentil all I got. rap. <laughs> right. Lentil punchlines. Not enough lentils. So you're, you're, you're absolutely right about that. Um, I'm actually, I'm actually, now we get into the confessional, I've actually been mulling over, um, not fucking with meat no more. Wow. Um, kind of in, there's a little bit of corollary to seeing my contemporaries, Fife's my age, um, and seeing the contemporaries kind of kind of pass away and then also eating a hamburger and feeling that shit in your colon for like six days <laughs> and feeling like maybe that's not where I want to go with it. So I'm coming out with a new vegan album called um, No Cheese. No, I, but, but, I am, but I am kind of... Kicking that around in the sense that um, you're not going to live forever. Yeah, you get yeah. older, man. Yeah, you're not going to live forever. Um, I really feel like I should pick something and not eat it, whether it's like refined sugar right. or dairy. Right. I can't imagine it being meat at this point in my totally. life, to be honest yeah. with you. But yeah. I should, just to, for like willpower. Dairy's and like, hard, though. Cheese, I mean, geez. I know. Okay, we're getting off topic. <laughs> <laughs> Cheese. But off way off let me know if you end up not eating meat. That would be very curious yeah, yeah, to see yeah. the follow through. Well, I, I I gave up I gave up the NFL after fucking thirty years. That's an easy one. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So we'll, the Niners we'll are about see. to get good again, though. It's going to be harder. It's it's gonna it's gonna be tempting, but um, yeah. If if Cap can be vegan, so can I. No, I'm not, I'm not being vegan. I'll never give up cheese in this lifetime or the next one. Um, but anyway, this is the Dad Bod Rap Pod. You know, sometimes you get rap commentary, incredible interviews. Um, sometimes you get men's health. It's, <laughs> we're, we're here for all of it. You know what? You know what the biggest health wave was, though, of the 90s in rap was the um, safe sex movement. Yeah. Mm, yeah. Like the whole idea of wrapping it up yeah. in, a, in a Jimmy. Like, That's true. That's like true. I really came yeah. of age. Like if you literally don't have sex with a condom on, you're going to die immediately. Yeah. 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 We thought Magic Johnson was dead. You know, when it happened, yeah, totally. when it happened. yeah, yeah, yeah. Those are death and and you can get through anything if magic made it. Right. So um, <laughs> I love the term Jimmy hat, or as me and my yes. friends used to call it, a James cap. <laughs> I'll be fine. <laughs> Just wordplay. Oh man, Just wordplay for you. Oh man. Okay, prophylactics. Oh, man. I remember when Q-Tip said he had crazy prophylactics, and not knowing what that meant, right. and not having the internet to figure it out. Yeah. It was literally yeah. years later yeah. when I was like, "Oh, Dude, he, he educated fools, man." That's that's what a pro. He, they had us on the pubic enemy, yes, which was uh, which was about um, getting crabs. So, so kids, that's all I'm saying. There's just a wealth <laughs> of information out there. Please tap in. We are the Dad Bods. This is the Dad Bod Rap Pod. Barely, barely legal. Jerry's favorite magazine. Um, 
episode 17. Uh, this is huge because we have an interview with the one and only Fat Lip of the Far Side. Um, it's another one of those occasions where, you know, I definitely had to to compose myself not to just kind of nerd out and, and, and fanboy out on the guy. But gosh, I mean... The Far Side, such an incredible group. Um, you know, Fat Lip, an integral part of that. It was an amazing interview. Um, and I'll, I'll tell a quick story, and, and, and Nate can jump in and disagree with me. But um, <laughs> So 1995, um, at our community college here in the South Bay called De Anza, um, they used to have these concerts called De Anza Day, uh, where they would bring a bunch of groups out. And so De Anza Day 1995... Um, I'm there. Gifted Gab is performing. Far Side is the headliner. Don Penn is there for some reason. No, no, no. In the, no, no, no fame. Yes, yes, yes. Ooh. She was there. Um, and so, you know, it's it's kind of like one of these proto festivals, like a, a little itty bitty uh, Lollapalooza type of type of situation out on the lawn and, and all this and that. And so, um, you know, Lab Cabin had just came out. Folks were, were playing it to death. They performed, or no, Lab Cabin hadn't just came out. They performed some of the new songs from Lab Cabin, mm-hmm. and we were like, oh, my God, this is new shit. Um, and I think Running Away had just came out. And so um, if you look at that record, the inside cover is a photo of the show, and it's De Anza Day. Oh. It's like all of them on stage at, at De Anza Day. Um, so, you know. Oh, Whatever. that's cool, man! Come I have on. it. I gotta, I gotta. Yeah, yeah. Out. Open, open it up. If you look in the fold. back, there's a small gentleman with like Dickies and a black hoodie on. <laughs> um, backpack full of tapes. Uh, that was me. No way. You, so you're pictured on the? No, I'm not. Oh, okay. I'm, just, I'm, friend. <laughs> I'm friend. I'm friend. <laughs> I'm friend. I mean, we'll, we'll edit that out. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, but uh, but yeah, it was a great interview and and kind of off air. We kind of got it. We started trading some barbs about what is the the better far side record and and for my money i i know far side uh bizarre ride is is more iconic more fun record i think lab cabin is a better collection of songs i think Mm. um i think you know bizarre ride had its had its skits and energy that they couldn't even recreate it was so amazing but then nate kind of slapped my wine out of my hand and was like (laughs) preposterous <laughs> i just disagree I, I so i grew up on this on bizarre ride right it's like bizarre ride is the id it's just like totally unbridled it's just fun right um the songs are great the energy is great it's it has one of the best marriages of cover art with content oh, absolutely. it's like they right. are riding right. into this right. weird vaginal carnival roller coaster thing. at yeah. the carnival and there's like all these like fun horn lines and mm-hmm. it's just it's just a, such a fun record it's a party record for me right, right. i've had many parties and it's been in the background mm-hmm. a, a ton of them um they the interplay between them is really interesting um fat lip kind of establishes his persona as this kind of like vulnerable right self-deprecating right. dude mm-hmm. like his iconic verse on passing me oh, by uh, uh-huh. is about not getting the girl and if there's anything that i identify with <laughs> it's that so i've just always liked that and we we touch on this a bit in the interview um lab cabin has a different energy it has right, a different yeah. tone Absolutely and it right. just never spoke to me as much yeah. it's a very good record yeah. i have the LP and all the 12 inches and all the remixes and I really like it mm-hmm. and it's where JD gets introduced to the world and goes right. on to become an icon but I just don't like it as much and it and maybe that's clouding my perception of whether it's as good or sure. not but to me all that really matters is the one that like struck me you know what I mean right right I, I think it's the difference between what what's tighter and what's your favorite and but I mean uh, like we were saying earlier I think the rough edges on Bizarre Ride sort of makes it you yeah. know and uh, the compositions on on um, Lab Cabin might be a little bit tighter, but you know, you, you can't really mess with the color and the energy of Bizarre Ride. And yeah. I have to say, Weed Carrier rap really started here. Like Quentin got a record deal. <laughs> Quentin has did. a twelve inch that. on Delicious Vinyl. I remember that. That's crazy. That's I remember the, that. Like, there's no Fonsworth Bentleys without Quentin. Man, yeah. man, yeah. Quentin on his way was was yeah. You know, I I think when we were getting our weed. We kind of wish the dude's name was Quentin. <laughs> we kind of, yeah, it kind of set up um, this this West Coast, um, you know, kind of party backpack MC aesthetic. Mm-hmm. Um, I think we all aspire to be that. And so we talked to Fat Lip a little bit about that, what it was like to make that record, 
uh, we talked to him about um, what's up, Fat Lip, and and kind of great song. what he's up great what song. he's up to now. It, yeah, amazing song. Um, and apparently the the short film, which I haven't seen, the it, Spike Jones. It's joint. one of the rawest films you'll ever see. Okay. Yeah. It's, okay. it's from an artist who's just being bare with it. Okay. Worth a YouTube. Yeah. All it's right. on YouTube. I mean. But we're here to celebrate Fat Lip's Absolutely. artistry. Right. I would say he's a great MC. Great yeah. MC, great he's voice, a great, great rhyme writer. Yes, and I think because he's such a personality guy and so boisterous that his rhymes have never really been parsed mm-hmm. in the way that, mm-hmm. like you know, a, a kind of more serious MC would be. Right. But he, I'll, I'll put his work up against a lot of people. He's the, a really, really good rhymer. The totally. dopest Ethiopian. I know. Right. I was just right. like, I, all right, there it is. Yeah. It's done. And it's as, you, done. as you as you guys will see later in the interview, I mean, he sort of ties this like lineage into Richard Pryor. It's just it's yeah. perfect. Yeah, it's yeah. Great. It's the it's humor. A great interview. Um, um, really cool cat, gives some great behind the scenes stories which I I've never heard about um, before. Exclusives here <laughs> on the Dad Bod Rap Pod. So we hope that you guys all enjoy this interview, talking to the one, the only Fat Lip. So you know, um, I, so you know, what 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 have you been doing um, for the last like few years? I mean, since probably the public has heard from you. I mean, you you've shown up on a couple tracks here and there, but you know, uh, let let your fa- let your fans and everybody know what you're uh, up to. Yeah, I mean, you know, it's kind of like pretty much the same old thing. You know, um, um, you know, I think in like 2012, that was like the 20 year anniversary for the record. Okay. And um so we kind of like uh I hadn't seen any of the other cats, you know, Trey uh Jay Swift who produced the record and we never toured with. Mm-hmm. So we decided to start doing shows, you know, just for the 20th anniversary. And um and it's just been amazing cuz um we've been touring like off we've been touring that shit like 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 we go to like the Europe like like twice a year, like we we tour all the time from that. Awesome. We just then we just do lab capping. So it, okay, and it's it's crazy because it's kind of I mean not lab capping, it's uh, bizarre right, mm-hmm. and because uh, we call it bizarre right live. So we pretty mm. much we like we turned this shit into like a like a um, a review. Perfect. You know what I mean? So well, you, like, I, like it, I mean it's classic. It's, it's classic. Yeah, it's it's been great for me because it's just like it's a new thing. Like it's. Like it made me realize that you know hip hop is still uh, it still matters to a lot of people, young people as well. So because you know that's like they kind of like you know discovering us for the first time, and, and that part is really uh, amazing. You know okay, I mean? okay. Well, you know what? What looking back, what do you think? What do you think about Bizarre Ride? Like really stuck with people. Oh man, you know it's funny because I. Like it only as time moves on, I start to understand it. Because uh, to be honest with you, when that when we were first making that album, um, like that wasn't what I had in mind, and that definitely wasn't what I was going for. Mm. And the things that people say that they love about the album, I had to go li- go back and listen to that and try <laughs> to figure out what they were talking about. You know what I mean? But at the end of the day. I can't say that, um, you know, we definitely put, you know, everything into it, you know, our heart in, into it. And then at the end of the day, that's kind of like, I guess that's what um, communicates to people, you know. Was it as fun um, to record as it sounds? Because listening to it, I wanted to hang out with you guys. It just sounded like <laughs> the funnest fucking record ever to record. Like, was that process as fun as it seemed? Yeah, it was. It was, but it was also, it was fun, but it was also... Um, it was also like kind of kind of hectic because there was a lot of uh, I uh, creative ideas that mm. were coming from you know all members and, and like we used to fight over this shit you know what I mean like we were just hype back then you know so I so when you say fun I can I I, I know what you're saying like it was a lot of energy mm. you know um, a lot sometimes it was frustrating because we was really trying to like you know make this art and everybody was trying to do it with you know do it their way. Like Jay Swift, you know, he produced the whole album. We stopped talking before the album was was even finished. Hmm, wow. You know what I'm saying? It was like it was, yeah, it was, it was, it was kind of an intense. It was actually as fun as it sounds. It was kind of an intense process, hmm. you know. And uh, but it was great to like step away from it and then give it to the people and then let the people enjoy it and then be like, yo, I listened to that all the way through and I had fun, you know. Um, 
Yeah, and that's that's what it, that's what it was, and and uh, it took me a long time to just even listen to that shit. Like, mm. um, like I don't know. I, I guess you know, it's a, when when you work on something, it's 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 different, you know. Um, but like, I, I think like probably like five years after I made the album, I listened to it like by myself. I think I was probably on shrooms, and then <laughs> and then I was like, oh shit, I see. Okay, yeah, this is fun. <laughs> but like, you know what I mean? But, but, but for us, we was constructing it, so you know. And, and, and it's amazing as time passes, as time goes on, to see kind of. I don't know. There's it, a lot of elements involved in it. There's a lot of like magic involved in that record. We had a mentor that really like taught us like some fundamental things about, you know. Um, like how to make lasting music, and 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 and, and, and the, the fact that this is still going on, it's like, you know, I, I always think about that. It's things that I didn't see at the time, you know. I I can like see now, like it's it's, it's interesting. Who are you referring to? The mentor, uh, this guy named Reggie Reggie Andrews. He he he's a producer for the Dad's Bit. Oh wow. Um, yeah, you know, Let It Whip, mm-hmm. and uh, and so. He was actually a, a teacher at Locke High School in Los Angeles, and you know, and he had a program that he had from his house where he just uh, offered, you know, aspiring young musicians to come and learn about the business and just the, the process of uh, making records. And that's and I, and I met him and Jay Swift at the same time at a um, at a at a uh, showcase cause they used to do showcases in LA, you know, mm. you used to hear about them on, on K day mm. back in the day. And then that's, that's how you, that's, you know, if you was trying to be a rapper, that's how you got on. You went to showcases. That, that's how I met Jay Swift and Reggie. And, um, yeah, man, I mean, pretty much every record from, um, Oh no, every record from bizarre. Ride came from Reggie's record collection. One oh, day wow. we were just like, yo, wow. can we, yeah, no, it, 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 it was crazy. Like, yeah, every every record came. He was just like some of them wasn't even open, but like we went through those records, and then probably like for two months we was just like in this in this studio, just like smoking weed, listening to all of these records, just like having a feeling that something was about to happen. It was, mm. it, was it was interesting. Um, can you yeah, describe man. the change in tone between Bizarre Ride and Lab Cabin? Like, what's what was different? Well, uh, by by that time, you know, we, we, you know, the it was a lot that was different because you know we had went through this threshold, which was you know the music industry. Like we had never been in the music industry before. We had never, you know, had like a record deal or meetings at record companies and been on television or been heard ourselves on the radio. So by the time we did Lab Cabin, you know, we had you know gone through a lot. You know, just this whole other universe. We was in this whole other world. You know, we went to New York. That was our first um, promo tour in New York. And, mm-hmm. like, you know, we were fans of hip-hop. And, like, we, so we were, like, meeting all of our fans. It was, like, it was surreal. And I was, like, <laughs> at a club. And, you know, Grand Poobah was coming up to us. And, like, oh, I like your Q-tip. And, wow. you know what I mean? So it, so all of that, that was that was one part of it. And then... Um, I think by the time Lab Cabin came in, it maybe wasn't as jolly and fun. We were kind of yeah. like working because now we got this record company behind us that's right. making sure we continue the train and keep this thing going, you know? Mm-hmm. So I think that that vibe kind of came through, you know, and we, and we didn't do it in L.A. Well, a uh, lot of it, initially, we didn't do it in L.A. We went out to New York. I that's how we met... That. Uh, Okay. Yeah, that, that's that's. Well, so yeah, uh, and you have you, know I mean? you had different production on um, on a lab cabin. Did you work directly with Dilla? Yeah, we worked with Dilla. We met Dilla through uh, Q Tip. Wow. When we went out to New York, talk a we bit about that. And to... Talk a little bit about that and and how he str- struck you. Yeah. Well. Um, well, oh, Dilla. We, I didn't. We didn't really meet him until until much later. Um, but like when we first went out to New York, Q Tip gave us the um, his CD, okay. and I think we recorded like three or four songs 
before we even met him. We recorded Running Before We Met Him and, mm. like, oh. Rob and all of that. We did that in New York. You know, he was just a name on a beat tape at that time, a right. beat CD. He's yeah. like, oh, this guy named Jay Dilla has these beats that we're going to use. That was pretty much it. And then, um, and then you know, when those songs came out, we were like, oh, okay, this kind of like feels like right. And then we all decided to just bring him out to L.A. And so he came out to L.A. with us. And then he was uh, in the studio all the time. He was just in the studio all the time. Like, I don't really remember him. I don't know. A lot of cats, when they would come into our camp, we was already had our vibe going. Like, we have screaming matches about samples. and <laughs> You know what I mean? So a, a lot of times when people came into the camp, they would kind of just sit back and just, like, like, watch us. It's like, you know what I mean? Just, like, be crazy in the studio all day. And so he really wasn't saying too much. I just mm. remember him always in the studio making beats. Mm, wow. And I was trying to do beats at the time. Um, and they were good. And, it, like, I showed him some of my beats, too, and they were good. But right. my sounds mm. wasn't up to par. Like, my drum sounds were amateur. Mm. You know what I mean? Uh, and so, because, like, a lot of lot of the songs that we did, he, uh, the record company would take, I would turn in a song, and they would give it to him because my beat was just not up to par. You know what I'm saying? Mm. Like, uh, something that means something. Uh, actually, the running remix. I don't know if you know the running remix. Yeah. with uh, mm-hmm. uh, Yeah, that was, that was my beat, but my drum <laughs> sucked, and I just didn't know how to produce. Uh, I did not. I had the ideas, but I didn't, you know what I mean? And he always, Dilla always gave me, like, like encouragement, though, you know what I mean? And, uh, but, yeah, he was, like, just super chill, all, just always in the studio. And then I don't think it was just, like, way later in chill, I even knew that he rapped, you know? And uh, and that was just, like, a whole other persona. And then, it was, and then, you know, the album came out, and then... Actually, and then I got off the group. And after I got off the group, I kind of, like, stopped listening to hip-hop because I just started listening to other stuff, like shit on the radio I, I used to listen to. So, and it, like, by early 2000, I didn't really know, like, all of the shit that he was putting down. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? And then I would hear it. I was like, yeah, I know Dylan. I know J.D., yeah. <laughs> but, no, but he was becoming an icon, like, right, right. to the, the generation, you know, that was coming up after us, like, major and i didn't really that didn't really hit me until like later you know what i mean it's just like you know like if you have a friend or a family member like you yeah you know what they do but then sometimes you don't realize the effect that they have on the rest of the world right. and that that it took me a while it really took me a while to like sit back and just be like wow this dude and then i because i just did a uh did the tribute uh i spun at the tribute at uh at uh in l.a and so I was just going back, going back, listening to all this shit, man. I was like, it's amazing, man. Just like a giant, man, a giant. And, and then not, not to mention, he, like, he literally became an icon. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, it's just it's his face, his image, and just like everything. Dilla changed my life, slogans and all of that, man. It's incredible. So could, could you talk incredible. a little bit about the, uh, the far side manner era i was listening to an interview with uh the photographer b plus who was talking about um just how live that era was and how a, a lot of la artists was coming through and like what was that vibe like okay so so then i was telling you about reggie right mm-hmm. so we so that was like a camp that we had and that was like 50 kids over there in in inglewood and but then we discovered that they had this thing called the good life that was, you know, off of Crenshaw, very close to where we were in Inglewood. And then, so we went over there one day. There was freestyling. And, uh, well, actually, one of the guys, um, <clears throat> one of the guys, um, in, I don't know if you're familiar with Freestyle Fellowship. Oh, yes. Uh, so, uh, Peace, mm-hmm. uh-huh. uh, in Freestyle Fellowship, he was a student at Locke. So I knew him from, um, from our camp. Uh, under Reggie and so I think maybe he was the first person who told us about good life and things like that so that was just like LA kids just kind of like meeting and networking and shit under this like this new wave of hip hop that was coming and but with our own flavor you know what I mean so mm-hmm. like we got the as soon as we got a record deal we got we got a you know we got the flat house you know what I mean it was just like 
painted, painted, painted all the walls with graffiti, just living the dream. You know what I mean? Like seriously, <laughs> living the hip hop dream. Like smoking weed, got the turntables in the living room. Fucking Fat Five Freddy coming over to in, uh, interview us for MTV. He's tripping wow, off of the graffiti wow. and shit. Like seriously, the dream. Wow. And then it was dope because uh, we used to throw because they had the good life, and that was like you know every MC in the world. I mean, in LA. Uh, would go there. So then, at, but after we had the uh, at the Far Side Manor, we had the afterlife. They was, so everybody yeah, would come yeah, over. Yeah. We were just hip hopping, man. It was just like we were just at that age where like, we didn't care about anything. You know, we all had our girlfriends, but they didn't really even. They kind of was like they kind of felt like something was going on, so they just kind of let us do what we did. Like they never like pressured us to like all oh, you spending time like. And it was it was like it was incredible. And then like we were just so into this hip hop thing that was just like just just you know, everything to us at that time, you know, and then it was like see it felt like everybody, you know, every everybody was just it was so many kids that was just feeling this vibe. And then uh yeah, and it was great. And then it was like that's what we was living every day. Um let me see the manor. Yeah, and then we did beach there. We did. We, we filmed uh, "Pass Me By" there. You okay. know what I'm saying? And it was in the hood. It was in the hood. But we was like the energy there was just so cool. Like never had any problems or nothing like that, man. It was just like I don't know, man. It was it was a cool cool situation. That's awesome, man. Um, I want to move up a little bit in time to your solo work. Um, you've always kind of been had this great ability to kind of be self-deprecating and vulnerable and talk about your life. Can you talk a little bit about uh, What's Up, Fat Lip, and how that all came about? Yeah, What's Up, Fat Lip. Um, yeah, that was, yeah, I mean, I guess, you know, I'm like a, rich, a fan of Richard Pryor, and I guess that was like a, a like a, um, a, a comedic stand-up approach to hip-hop. And I just felt like, you know, nobody had really, it was an angle, you know? Yeah. Um, and so, but actually, you know, something that I was feeling, you know what I mean? I was like, damn, man, kind of like thinking about all the times that I kind of like jumped out and shit. And then, I don't know, I guess I was just like dealing with that at the time. And then, and a lot of it also was just, um, like, wouldn't it be funny if I just talked about life after hip hop and all of that? Because remember I was saying like, like, um, you know, doing in the, in the early nineties when things was going on. Like, that was just like, you, you know, you thought it would never end type of thing, you know? Right. You, and then and then by that time, like, 96, 97, you know, I wasn't, I wasn't even 30 then, but I was still thinking that I had, you know, had a lot of experience and, you know, I was getting older and shit like that. So, yeah, that was my thing. Like, what am I doing now after hip-hop? And then so in the video, I was like, oh, I'm in a clown suit, <laughs> um, a car salesman and shit like that. Um but yeah, it was cool, man. That that sam only thing about that that sample and it was weird because that sample is actually um a, a remake of the Beatles yesterday. Mm. Uh. And then and and for and then I can't find that record because I've kind of forgot the group and there's nothing that I can do to, to like to find that sample. There's like, probably a uh, four or five thousand covers of that song. <laughs> <laughs> we'll we'll find it. We'll get yeah. you a copy, man. It, <laughs> <laughs> it's it's yeah I can't I can't I can't um but yeah it's just weird that, like how you know the, the the actual you know the the subject matter is is you know parallel and you know what I'm saying right perfect Absolutely. man perfect well I mean at this point you've had I mean Kanye says that uh, Bizarre Ride is like his favorite rap record of all time I mean at this point you have generations of fans um what are some uh, final thoughts for you know your your longtime fans as well as new ones that's uh, that are gonna discover the far side as well as your solo work um you know, my final thoughts i would just i would just say hey keep 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 supporting us you know keep yeah. uh keep you know what i mean we i mean we still on tour we we actually about to hit europe and uh you know as long as, as people you know people need that vibe we're gonna you know because we it's you know, we, we're just going to do this. It's like it's a vibe. We, I feel good. It's like a vibe that we created, kind of. And you know, and, it, and you know, it's a branch of hip hop, but it's kind of like our own, our own um, 
interpretation of it, mm-hmm. and, it's, and it's ours. It's our flavors. It comes from the heart. So, like when when we when I see fans appreciating it and telling us that they love it, like it, you know, that's it's it's a that's the best thing in the world, man. Because right you know, we really we was really serious about this. We really took it serious, you know. Right. Um, and so, yeah, you know, hey, hey, and if they really want to see a real far side reunion, man. Uh, Try to get a petition going. <laughs> <laughs> Go fund it. Go fund it. Yo, well, yeah, Fat Lip, thank you so much, man. We're we're like your biggest fans, and we really appreciate the time, and we'll be catching up with you soon. Thank you, brother. Thank, thank you again, you, man. man. All right, thanks, man. Talk soon, all man. All right, peace. Cool. I want to thank you for listening to another dope episode of the Dad Bod Rap Pod. More fly conversation and interviews coming your way every week. You can find the podcast on SoundCloud, soundcloud.com slash dadbodrappod. And we're always down to interact with you on Twitter at dadbodrappod, all spelled out. Subscribe on Stitcher, Google Play, and iTunes. 